Madam Chair, I think I've said enough about that. Chair, <laughs> I call Chris Pink. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak in this, the committee stage of the Maritime Powers Extension Bill. Uh, I'd like to focus in my contribution on some time frames involved in this piece of legislation. Um, starting with the fact that in the uh, title of the bill is of course the word extension, which is a pretty easy hint that uh, we'll be making some changes, indeed extending powers. Um, and so my question to the Minister, it's actually a series of questions that I'd um, like him to address, um, is around the time frame of the Act, as it will be, uh, coming into force, which is of course pretty soon, being the 1st of October 2018. So notwithstanding that the word amendment isn't in the title, it is effectively um, a bill that amends other legislation, as noted in the commentary, uh, specifically the uh, Customs and Excise Act uh, 2018 and Misuse of Drugs Act uh, 1975. So one of the things that we uh, discussed in the select committee, and I acknowledge various members uh, around the House at the moment who are uh, present now and, and present indeed on that committee when we were discussing uh, the bill. We talked about the need for it to pass, it, uh, to pass with various amendments and um, no doubt colleagues will talk about those in more detail, but the timing of the implementation to, to understand uh, those amendments, but also just the nature of the bill itself, uh, which of course is not yet law, but in just a couple of weeks uh, appears likely to be. Uh, when I spoke at, the, uh, at a previous reading of the bill, uh, Madam Chair, I noted, um, perhaps flippantly, that um, uh, offenders or would-be offenders don't need much time for compliance, they don't need much time to get their act, into, into, um, uh, get their act together rather, to um, be able to comply with this law because what they're doing is of course already illegal and actually what we're talking about uh, is the means of enforcing that which is already prohibited. However, uh, what I should and uh, perhaps uh, could have noted at that time, Madam Chair, is the fact that compliance uh, will be needed, changes will be needed to ensure that uh, compliance is done properly by our customs agency and also the other agencies that will be uh, necessary to uh, ensure that the bill has effect. Uh, in particular, I refer to the Navy, but I understand that other government agencies might well be involved uh, in the very uh, sense that this is intended to work, which is one of interoperability. In relation to preparing themselves for the new regime that will come into force once this bill is passed, the Customs Agency, the Navy and so forth will need good advice on the rules of engagement um, from the illegal officers and so forth to ensure that they don't overstep the powers that they are being given. They are extensive powers, that is the very purpose of the bill and it's one that we on this side of the House support the government in introducing. But the fact that it is uh, such um, a major issue to enable um, not only New Zealand flagged ships but also overseas flagged ships and stateless vessels to be boarded uh, is something that we should take very seriously and get right the first time. While the uh, action out on the high seas or within the EEZ or wherever it might be can uh, take place um, in circumstances that don't allow a lot of time for reflection. Of course, courts applying and um, understanding uh, the nature of alleged offences can be a bit more reactive. So it's really in terms of the agencies that uh, will be uh, fulfilling the aims of this uh, legislation that I am thinking about when I talk about the timeframes involved. And uh, essentially my points in relation to this boil down to the question to the Minister where uh, I wonder if the 1st of October 2018 is an appropriate commencement date, whether that will give sufficient time for the various agencies to get their heads around uh, the things that will be needed. And if there's any doubt about the seriousness of what's involved and therefore uh, the uh, stakes of uh, compliance and, and understanding uh, where the rights and responsibilities lie, I think it can be found in the fact that as alluded to in the commentary, the changes to existing law can be um, uh, described under a couple of different headings. One is expanding powers of the New Zealand Customs Service, uh, and the other is to establish offences that apply 
in the circumstances that are set out there. Those are major things because they do impact on New Zealand citizens as well as citizens of other countries and perhaps even stateless people, analogous to flagless uh, vessels. And so I'd uh, welcome the contribution from the Minister on that point regarding timing. I call Hamish Walker. Madam Chair, thank you for this call. Uh, I just want to ask the Minister a couple of questions.